What's going on guys, Joe Thome, GRC.com, and today we have the Blackout from Red Cat. It's the XBE. This is their 110 scale brushed electric buggy. And I had a few issues out of the box, been taken care of, Red Cat, I let them know about it. It's all good. And uh, I will be running this thing on a 2S LiPo. So the speeds that you're gonna see are with a 2S LiPo, not the stock nickel metal hydro battery that you get with this bone stock. So the speed will be a little bit different, it'll be a little bit slower than if you had a lipo but anyway we're gonna get this thing shredded we'll go over the details and all the specs of this thing after the end of it and uh you know the issue that i had with it but it's all been fixed so anyway let's get shredded man all right so i know you guys want to see this thing how fast does it go stock out the box brushed it's running on a 2s lipo 5000 milliamp 50c discharge it is on miles per hour and uh so let's get ripping here and see what this thing does stock out the box Guys can see that 23 miles an hour. All right, guys, so what do you think about this vehicle, the Red Cat Blackout XBE? I thought it was pretty good, man. I had a blast running this thing anyway. But let's go over the specs, what you need if you're looking to buy one of these for the first time. My issue that I had with it, hopefully you don't have the same issue. I did let Red Cat know about it. But without further ado, you would need to remove, if you've already run the thing, you already know that you need to remove this body clip. Uh, there would be a silver one that would be in here. You just take that off and then you can open this up because I'm doing this with one hand. I just took <laughs> left it out. So um, 40 amp electronic speed controller that's sitting underneath here. You will need to get to it if by chance you decide like I did to go with a LiPo battery. You need to move a jumper over. That's why you'll need to check out your instructions, read up on that stuff so you know what you're doing if by chance you decide to go with a different battery. So um, 550 motor, nice heat sink that's on there. I do like that Red Cat added that on there. Now it does have a three kilogram servo. It is weak, all right? I'm not gonna beat around that one. Um, when I was driving it slow, you know, it it seemed to go left if I went left, and it stayed going left if I was going slow. Once I started going faster, we're gonna say over five miles an hour, it seemed to be fine with no problems there. It's just because it's kind of weak, you can't turn these tires at a slow speed, it seems like, and uh, return to straight or zero, more or less. So, um, that's my gripe on that one, but it is an inexpensive vehicle for the most part. So those things that you can upgrade if you want to. If by chance you go with the pro version, then you got a better servo in there anyhow and some of the better electronics. But I like it. This one's not bad anyhow. I kind of like the, the underdogs more or less and you can do your own thing to them. Now, if you do decide to get one of these, you know, maybe you're new to the hobby or whatever, the only thing you need is just four AA batteries and they just go on the bottom side of this radio. Um, I've never had an issue with one of these radios as far as this particular model. It's always been good, nice little rubber grip that's on there. You will need to open this cover up when uh, go ahead and running it. See a little on and off switch that's here. If by chance you need to uh, adjust your trim and steering and things like that, then just 
open that up anyhow. So yeah, good radio. It's got nice range on it. I have not exceeded the range on it, so I don't even know how far it would actually go anyhow. Um, when it comes to your battery, it's I ran it on, I have a 5,000 milliamp LiPo. So this has less capacity. That's what that 3,000 is capacity is what it's talking about. Mine was 5,000, so there you go. Bigger number, more capacity. And the voltage is a little bit different when it comes to a LiPo versus a nickel metal. Now, you do get a little wall charger with it too. So it'd probably take you, you know, depending on what the amperage is on this. Anyhow, let's say it was at one amp, it would take you about three hours for this thing to be from, from zero to fully charged, about three hours at a one amp charge. It's gonna vary anyhow, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, yeah, you do get your instructions anyway. These are nice, you wanna check this all out, especially what I kind of go over, you know, I'm just kind of skipping over because I've done it for a while but you definitely want to read up on your instructions. Now, speaking of instructions, these are warning tags and, and you know how to hook things up properly. So this comes on like on the back of the, the vehicle itself, so you've got to rip that off of there. And then this one's on the electronic speed controller. This, this goes over the voltage and things like that. So you'll want to look at that before you start yanking stuff off. Again, I've done this for a little bit, so I'm comfortable with you know taking the tag off of there. Now, next thing, I got this thing straight out of the box and it was grinding noise. So what I had to do with it is one, let's get real quick on this one, uh, pinion gear. This is a stock pinion gear. This is one of the types of um, pinion gears I stuck in it. Same type of pinion gear, brass one. It's just a little bit loose tolerance because the pinion gear and spur gear, they were just too close together and they meshed really, it kind of sounded rough. So I went ahead and just swapped it out and for whatever reason, same amount of teeth on this brass one, out of like a Gen 8, Red Cat, so same brand, just out of a different vehicle with the same amount of teeth that are on it. And it, it worked better, so that's why I just took it out. This here, this would be, I'll kind of show you, this is gonna be for the rear differential. So this particular little dude would be sitting underneath this plastic or inside this plastic case here. And this little gear here would be sitting right around in here too. It's for the uh, drive shaft that you can see. Anyway, these two mesh up together. So these two mesh up together, but they were too tight. So what I ended up doing, and these would be bearings on both sides of this gear. I'm just putting them in there loosely. But I put, we're gonna say this, if it was the right size, it would go in front of this bearing and it would just allow this um, gear to be shifted a little bit away from this gear here. And that's all I did, I just moved a little bit and I've had the issue before where too many shims, not enough shims. In this case here, it needed a shim to get away from that other little gear. And it's all good. So everything's good now. Uh, you know, if you maybe have an issue where things are kind of grinding sounding, you know, alert Red Cat, you know, or your dealer, whoever you bought it from, and, or us, and let us know about it. Uh, that way Red Cat can take care of it. It'll be a warranty thing. Uh, they might want you to do your own investigation. So just kind of be mindful. This is a hobby. So sometimes they might ask you to fix your vehicle to get it. They want to know what the problems are. So just be mindful of that, that you, you are getting into a hobby and it is a good thing to learn how to work on your car. So there you go. Now there aren't any tools with this thing, which is a bummer. So if you're just starting out and you're like, oh, I got to work on this car, I don't have any tools. You're going to need to acquire some tools because you will need to work on your car guaranteed. It's just wear and tear. So this kind of letting you guys know too, but I definitely appreciate all you guys watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing with it, your, with your friends. I'll catch you in the next one. You guys take care and thank you again for watching. Peace.